Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the tangle Lollywimple from CZT Sandy Hunter. Even if this didn't look cool, the name is awesome. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. All right. So this is a neat tangle. Um, you know, I, I'm going to start off by saying, make sure you take a look at the For More Inspiration link. Because what I was going to say is, it's it's a great border tangle, but you could use it for so much more. And when you look at that, click that link and scroll down, you know, past the step out. She has a lot of great uh, samples and ideas and ways to use this. Um, it's brilliant. All right. So one of the other things that she mentions first off is that, you don't necessarily have to have, um, say, a penciled string line to um, to do this. You could do do this with with orbs. I'm going to pretend oh, that this is my. Uh, uh, I'm going to it's going to be my border line, and so then what I would do is, uh, depending on the distance, we're just going. I'm going to put a second line in here because that's probably what I would do. And then, and it's good to, to be able to, to use it to, to demonstrate, but, but uh, that's what I would end up doing. And I would probably, because this is kind of on the whimsical side, I would for sure make them not even because that is fun. All right. So next step is, or actually first step maybe, depending on which way you look at it, is to put orbs in. And the way she did them is about halfway through your um, your string line. And again, you don't have to use a pencil line. You know, I, I like to go with Zentangle's idea of uh, not having pencil marks that you would then uh, want to erase later. The idea of the pencil is it gives you a starting point, number one. And then two, it just becomes incorporated into the design. And you just don't worry about it. Okay, so we're putting orbs. She says different sizes. I think it's brilliant. I love that. And then, you know, you can distance them however you want. Don't, it, this is a great one for, let's not worry about being any, anywhere near, oh, I did make a great distance here, didn't I? Um, anywhere near perfect. Um, and it helps if I go slow and then I don't get this with my uh, my orb okay and you know sometimes for me it's just deciding well what am I doing I didn't want to just go big small big small big small okay let's put two big ones in right here I should probably put yeah well it'll work it'll all work out because it's entangled all right then um, I'm gonna go and put an aura line coming from your pencil line you know and back to the pencil line so not going past it and we'll do this one uh, for each one now and I love in her blog she says oh so you think this is you know just like crescent moon well wait a minute or something like that you'll have to read it I love the humor um, so this first step you know outside of the fact that these are orbs we're not filling it in although you could fill them in afterwards if you wanted to of course um, and I, and I just might being that I have some little, oh, I, I call them pigtails. Um, so she starts off with aura ing once all the way around and then says the rest can be done random. So for instance, I'm just going to pick one and say, well, we're just going to do, uh, I'm going to do two here. Then I'm going to jump over here. I'm going to put one over here and, oh, let's just do one over here. I'm going to jump over to here and uh, put one. Oh, maybe. How about two? Okay. Two here. <laughs> so you get to decide how you want to do this. The other thing, um, when I do crescent moon, I don't, uh, I don't do it this way. If, if I was doing crescent moon, I would aura and I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the auras touch. 
So if you do crescent moon that way, and I and because I, I kind of after I said it's kind of like crescent moon, and no, and at the same time, no, it's not. That's another reason, no, it's not. But I do know some people that do crescent moon that way, um, and I just I mention it just in case because, for instance, I would I would aura like so I would start here and aura that whole thing, and I wouldn't like I said I wouldn't touch that. So uh, I mention that just in case. Um, if your brain isn't all like mine and you go, well, wait, wait, wait a minute. That's not how, oh, no, no. <laughs> it's okay. And this is me talking to myself. It's okay. We can do this one a little bit differently. Now, randomness is something that I, I laugh. The, um, uh, well, spontaneous creativity. That's what I say. I have, I, I, I don't have any of, that is a challenge of mine. And so this is, this is taxing that, um, like if it had, a, if it had a limit, <laughs> like a, like a power limit, it, it's like, uh, this is, it drains the, the power quickly because, oh, it, it's, uh, the struggle is real. <laughs> Some of you understand. I know you do. Put it in the comments if you do. <laughs> so I'm just working to just. Go and not think. Just not think. That's the best. If you have that challenge also, just work at not thinking. I like to half joke and say thinking is overrated. I'm going to make a t-shirt one day. And I do that. Let's see, I'm, now I'm deciding which, which direction do I want to go. When I teach my music lessons, when I have students, and, and it, because there is just something about um, just letting go and not letting the other, because... Um, and different books have called it different things. Um, the uh, the third part of our consciousness, right? Because you have it, the the id, the ego, and the super ego, and I think it's the super ego, like the subconscious part. Uh, the uh, inner game of of music, uh, written by the same guy that wrote inner game of golf, called it yourself too. Um, that we have to train to uh, be quiet. <laughs> sometimes to be quiet and just go away because it's always criticizing it's always nagging and you know and and there's probably a purpose for it but sometimes especially if you're trying to be creative it is not helpful so as we're working through here by the way i've decided okay where do i want to go how do i want to fill this in and then using the hollow bow technique right so like here oh and i'll have a little space here so make sure to follow through and it, it really creates a neat, um, just a neat pattern. As you carry these lines through. And, you know, I, I have not been flipping my tile. You don't really, if it helps you, go ahead and do that. Um, this one, I can kind of do the curve lines. They're plenty comfortable either way. And... You know, and it works, like I said, works pretty well. So like I said, if, if fill in till you kind of think you're done. And yeah, there we go. So before we do a little bit of shading, there are a number of ways that this can also be finished. I'm going to go with the one that she has in the step out. And... Yes, I am. <laughs> well, darn. Okay, no, let me do a combination of things. All right, so one way is you can close off these ends, basically tracing over your string line, like so. And that might work just well for whatever project you're doing. Something else that she said you could, or she shows, demonstrates, is you can leave it open. And then you can have it turn into other tangles, if you wish. And I'm debating now, all of a sudden, on should I do it on this one? Should I do it, well, or should I start a new one and go from there? I wish this was alive, because then I would say, hey, tell me, which, which, do you, which would you rather have me do? Um... You know, let me just explain it. 
then I might do a second uh, a second one off of this and then um oh what the heck let's just do it okay so here's a couple things so you could extend these I like the one thing that she did and let me I'm gonna do it maybe right here in the middle so you could extend this line and kind of curve it in I'm gonna do that on both sides and then oh well this one well, those are the only two that are, that are attached to this. What I found in playing with this is that you really should um, use the lines that the that are attached to that orb. That's the best way I'm going to say it. Because like this aura goes with this orb, right? On this little one, if I did the same, oh, let's do that. So this one, I could have this coming up here. This one, same thing. This one goes to this orb. So I would have it curve over here this then you know you could put a little curve line in there to thinking halibau right although you probably could think halibau and bring one up oh you know up and over so so one of the other fun things is let me just i'm gonna use these two right here and we could do like a mu uh, muka frond that's what i'm gonna because muka is in it is a um, this is like one piece of the of the muka like the end muka is a tangle in and of itself and it's uh, it is really neat oh look at but I could almost do it as if let's do this okay and then so then I have to think okay I'm going on the outside here and then coming in so you see how I'm just taking these ends. And so one that where it's just kind of singular, I can do a little zinger. <laughs> although I do, I kind of want to find another open. Although you could, you could just do it with anything really. So like right here, oh, let's have this one swing all the way up and over, and we'll do a nice uh, what we I like to call fancy fescue. But I'm trying to not necessarily add anything to it. This, that one is just open, uh, open, make a little curve line there. Well, I don't know, I take this back because, you know, like I said, you could think about the halibau and, you know, take some of these other lines and kind of go to town. But <laughs> you get the idea. You get the idea. I feel like it needs a something else here. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, I really like the idea though of, uh, oh, let's uh, see what I could have this come up over here. And then merge right into there. There we go. That makes me a little happier. <laughs> Lots of fun. All right. Now, if you were to shade this, here's some ideas. Um, and I did not notice that she necessarily had some in there. But, of course, one way that um, I like to do things, well, we could start off with these orbs. And while there's graphite in there already, I'm just going to put uh, graphite to one side. I like to do these little C shapes. And, oops, I missed one. I'll, I'll uh, bunch of graphite packed up on here and then we'll do that last one works good yeah and just like that and like I said I'm not worrying about the line going through because in my in my world of uh, of Zentangle um, it's just part of the design so we don't worry about it so now what I'm doing is I'm just adding some graphite. I'm using actually what's left on the Torteon. Uh, we'll see how long that goes. To the places like here where it's where we're using the halibau technique and it's just kind of tucked in. And so that's, I don't know if you can see that. I'm, I'm kind of running out of the graphite on here. So these places where it's tucked in under, 
here. So it's going to be kind of a, and here, this, because it's, uh, it's kind of zigzaggy, I just put some, just kind of right down this, right down the center of that. So this definitely, you can just have a lot of fun with. And because that was all just kind of open there and this too, I'm just going to put some there. Oh, and this is tucked. Th this is all tucked under here. So it was kind of like a combination of, um, well, and depending on how you, um, how you shade print tangle, if you've done the, the tangle, uh, I know I do have a video on that and, um, where I kind of like to highlight uh, some of the um, the print tops that are up on top that, that I haven't gone underneath. And it's similar to shading Kalabau and all of that. So I just like to keep those principles there. And this will just add some really interesting, though it is already, I, you know, I, sometimes it helps to look at uh, the camera. So take a picture of it. Um, go look in the mirror with, with your... Um, with your tangle because uh, it takes on a whole different look when you're looking at it not with not directly with your eyes but from another store so through the lens of a camera you know or, or on screen or as I said um, holding it up in front of a camera that's what my mom said they used to do because uh, she went to she studied art education and uh, that's what they would do and like I said, uh, you know, the, it, it, the purpose of it, oops, I'm missing you right here, is to just get that different perspective. And you do. So it's really neat. So now, honestly, what I was thinking looked like, ugh. But I knew that once we get to the shading, it's going to look cool. And it does. I am happy with it. So lots of fun to be had with this tangle. And... And, and some unexpected things. So it depends on what you want, end up wanting to do with it. But do take a look at the For More Inspiration link uh, for all of those great ideas. Um, in that description section also, um, I always do my own version of the of the step out and then put you know who the originator of the tangle underneath that. Below those are ways to connect with me. So if you enjoyed this, um, would love to have if you enjoyed this and you think gosh it might be fun to take an online class well just so you know I do classes online almost twice a week it just depends on the week generally I have ones called tangle time it's on Thursday those are free where we would take a tangle like this and just have as much fun as we can with it sometimes I might have two just depending on the tangle but generally it's it's one and, um, oh, and it's so much fun, you know, and there, it's only an hour. Um, I both, I do two sessions. It's the same tangle. I have a lot of, well, those that can sometimes will come to both because they've got different ideas from seeing the, the screenshot and seeing everybody else's work. And, um, and it's just fun. And, uh, I also do, uh, I do some on Tuesdays and those I have one on a Tuesday that is free. I have, uh, the other ones are paid. Either it's an exclusive for my Tangle Edits membership club. That's like a subscription. Information is on my website. Um, and then um, and then other ones, I would post those. Um, and, um, you know, and people can sign up for them. The people that are in the club, that's part of the club membership. So take a look at my website for that. If you happen to be on Facebook, we have a wonderful Facebook community. Um, would love to have you join us there so you can post your work and, and have fun. And um, it, it, it's just an extension of the fun that we have online. Um, I Let me tell you, though, there are two. I have two required questions. It, it, it's nothing heavy. It's, I just like to make sure that the, the right tone is set for the group. And so just so you know that those are there. Um, and then lastly, if you enjoyed the video, would love to have you click like, feel free to share it. And if you like it enough to see more, I would love to have you be a subscriber to the channel. That is free. So again, 
I hope you enjoyed this. It turned out to be really, really neat. Um, I, I love it when I have something that just looks, you know, I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be a test of the shading, <laughs> the shading system to see if, if this can, uh, how, how well is this going to end up? And, you know, it never fails. It never fails. Really, really neat tangle. All right. So with that, thanks so much for watching and I wish you happy tangling.